Thank you. How are you? Thank you. Thank you. Let me just start with this part because I, I, we took the kids to Hilton Head a while back. The amount of construction between Macon and Savannah is, I, I hadn't been down there in a while. You get down towards Bryan County now and the big facility they're building for Hyundai. I mean, it's, it's just places that haven't had economic industry. Wilkinson County has his new projects, which is so rural. I mean, it, it really is amazing. You were doing such a good job with that intro. I thought about not coming out let you just keep talking about my, my, my record. Uh, but thank, thanks for having me. It's an honor to be here and host with you. And it is incredible. And it's not just happening on I-16 in rural Georgia. I mean, we have... Uh, an incredible amount of projects going on in southwest Georgia, which if you really look at the map and a lot of the counties that are there, some of those are the most poorest counties in the country, not just in the state, but in the country. And we've got great opportunity going in down there. Uh, I was talking with a car dealer out of Chattanooga last night, and he was talking about how really Chattanooga and they say it's like North Georgia now there because we're having so much growth in northwest Georgia just with great manufacturing jobs that are paying well above the existing county wage and it's really giving people wealth and opportunity which as you know they need in today's world of fighting Joe Biden's 40-year high inflation. True. All right I, I, I got to completely on a random tangent because I'm looking at your boots you know when my mother-in-law was here a couple of years ago and you were here she said she liked you because your boots had scuffs you, you they were authentic. Well, these definitely have uh, scuffs on them. Uh, thankfully, we had a, um, a groundbreaking yesterday up in Gainesville, mm -hmm. which, again, outside kind of the metro Atlanta area for Kubota Tractor. They're going to be building all their front-end loaders at that new facility. It's like the, the number of employees that they've increased since they came here in, like, 1970-something uh, is 8,900%. They employ over 3,000 Georgians now. They started with 40 or 50 um, they've done multiple expansions up there, and this is another multi, you know, $100 million plus project, several hundred jobs up in Gainesville and Hall County. And so I hadn't really had time to get my boots back in good, good order since we did that uh, yesterday. Now, look, this reminds me, Rick Perry one time told me that you can always judge a man by his boots if they look like they hadn't been worn in, you, you know, they're not authentic. Well, you know, I called a lot of, you remember when I went to Davos, I called a lot of, a lot of flack from people on the right because they thought I was going to get corrupted by George Soros or Al Gore or John Kerry or something. And I, I told people, after all I've been through and as strong a stance as I've taken for conservative causes, I don't think I'm going to get corrupted by any of those people. And so the greatest first lady in the country who's here today, Marty Kemp, right there. Uh, We go, to, we go to Davos, it's snow and it's wet, it's icy, and, and they're like, you cannot wear those cowboy boots. Like, it's slick, you're going to fall. I said, no, I have got to wear these cowboy boots. And thankfully, the first article was written when I was on the stage with Joe Manchin, uh, Senator Chris Coombs, and Christine Sinema, where I was criticizing the so-called Inflation Reduction Act and their do-nothing immigration policies at the southern border and a lot of other things. In the minute and 38 seconds that I got to talk on the panel with those federal politicians, a 45-minute panel, I only got to talk for a minute and 38 <laughs> seconds. I know that doesn't surprise y'all uh, for, for fed nothing against my friends that are federal politicians, but you know how they are. Uh, <laughs> but the first article written after that was, you know, that I was wearing my cowboy boots in Davos, so I thought that was, a, you know, really, really told the story in a lot of ways. It did. All right. I have said, I'm, I'm not going to talk a lot about this because I think I'm doing a disservice to the presidential candidates, but you are the governor of the state. We're in the county where the state prosecutor has decided to indict the former president. Uh, and I figure being the governor of the state, I should probably get your take on that. You know, I can't really comment on the indictment if you remember kind of through the process um, you know, during the whole 2020 election, there was a lot of things said, a lot of things done. At the end of the day, I followed the law and the Constitution. I was subpoenaed for the special grand jury, so, um, you know, I'm sure I will be a witness in whatever goes forward, so I really can't say much about the indictment. But regardless of what you think about the indictment, uh, when I came out 
uh, I guess it was two days ago now, and, and tweeted the election wasn't stolen here and that we need to stay focused on the future. Um, one thing is certain about these indictments, and in, in my mind, in my opinion, this trial, despite what dates anybody's asking for or anything else, it is not going to happen before the election. And the Democrats want us to be focused on things like this. So we're not focused on Joe Biden's record. Now, 